guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Superman Lois Season 1. Today we're going to be breaking down slash reviewing Episode 2 for this new season, so a hell of a lot went down. I have loads of notes, and we need to get through this, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So, Episode 2, I think may just be better than Episode 1. I really, really enjoyed this episode. I thought it was just such a good way to continue from a great premiere. And moving into episode 2, there was a lot and it teased a lot about what to expect later in the season. Like the stuff with Lex was amazing. We got to find out what happened to his version of Superman, which we'll get to later in the video, which is probably the biggest moment of the whole episode, the biggest revelation. But first things first, let's go to the start of the episode and so we have new memories, new experiences. You got this whole kind of montage with this beautiful music obviously this is a new theme tune for the show and it was just great and so talking about new memories and new experiences that is Lois's narration they are just a few things that she says she talks about moving in and basically moving locations to Smallville and so this was a great start to the episode because it was very emotional and it really worked okay so Superman teaches Jordan slash Superboy so he's gonna teach him how to fly go to all of these different places Jordan isn't allowed to go into school because, you know, his dad wants to teach him and basically bring him to the Fortress of Solitude and tell him what's what in terms of their history. And so Jonathan is left out of this. Now, this causes a bit of conflict in this episode because Jonathan basically is neglected and in a position that he normally isn't used to. Obviously, his life has completely changed since he moved to Smallville. It turns out he moved to Smallville and agreed to it because he wanted to help his brother. So you realize by the end of the episode that Jordan and Jonathan, like they're best together and they kind of make up and they have this great moment towards the end of the episode. So moving on to the next thing, we've got Captain Lex Luthor who is in Moldova and he's on the search for kryptonite. And now this is a thing that continues throughout the whole episode. He is going off in a ship and number one, it's very important to note that he has a ship. That means he is from somewhere and he traveled whether he escaped or not, or if he just came on purpose, that remains to be seen. However, he does come from a society where there is spaceships, basically, right? So this Earth that he comes from is different, and we get lots of teasers throughout the episode as to where he comes from, and I think I have an idea as to where exactly he comes from and what this version of Superman is. And so it goes on, and he's basically trying to stop Kal-El from doing what he did to his world. So he basically thinks he's been the hero. He thinks this version of Superman is going to turn into his version of Superman, essentially destroying his world at one point. So Lex thinks he is being a hero. And so this leads towards what happens towards the end of the episode after they go through a bunch of fights, and we'll go over the fights in a minute. But let's quickly skip to the end of the episode because there was a major shocking moment because when Lex goes to confront General Lane inside his military base, he breaks in and he actually talks to General Lane, calls him by his first name, Sam Lane. And so he obviously knows a different version of him from his own Earth. And it hints that they have some sort of relationship, or at least they did, before his world got destroyed. And so he basically says, you have to stop protecting Superman. And then he says, well, General Lane says the name Superman, and then in reply to that, he says, stop calling him that. And so this comes into my theory, right? Because he's saying, don't call him Superman. So maybe he wasn't Superman. Maybe he used to be Superman on his Earth and he became something else. And so I'll get into my theory in just a second. But also, he's always referred to him as Kal-El in these past few episodes. So was his version of Kal-El actually never... Superman. Was he Superman at one point and did he change? Now that is where my theory comes in. So at the end of the episode you have this flashback and you see this version of Lex from another Earth and he is a soldier, he's working with General Lane, that is where the connection comes from and so you see that Superman is here. So Superman is in fact evil. He is a black version of Superman wearing a black suit and he kills everyone on his earth. So this was a major shocking moment. I got chills and I was like, what the hell is going on? And so this leads me to believe, obviously he's got a black suit, so that infers 
he's bad. We've seen this suit before in a crossover, and that version of Superman was bad because it wasn't actually the real version of Superman. Anyway, so that isn't the same person, that isn't the guy from the crossover, I forgot his name, who basically inhabited and became Superman. So this is an actual Superman, an alternate version from this version of Lex's Earth. We don't know where it is for certain, however, my theory is this. Because throughout this episode he refuses to acknowledge him as Superman and only calls him Kal-El, I'm saying he was Superman at some point, but then, on his Earth, this version of Superman, whoever he turns out to be, in fact, was Ultraman. Now, who is Ultraman, you may ask? Well, Earth 3 in the comics is normally the Earth of the Crime Syndicate. So, the Crime Syndicate are an alternate version of the Justice League, who are all bad, and all the superheroes on that Earth are evil. And Ultraman is the alternate version of Superman, and basically the complete opposite of what Superman is. So, I believe what we're seeing here may be Earth 3. Now, I only say that because Earth 3 in the comics is in fact the Crime Syndicate's Earth, however, they may change it for the TV show and say it's like a different Earth, and basically because of Crisis, it got destroyed, but also mainly because of Superman, and so he had to escape. So what do you guys think about that? I really do think this could be true, because he's definitely an evil version of Superman, and the most iconic version of Superman who is evil is probably Ultraman, and so I highly recommend you go read up about Ultraman in the Crime Syndicate comics, and I really think this could be a possibility, and obviously as the season goes on, we're going to get more and more, and I think Superman at one point is going to realize that this alternate version of himself impacted this version of Lex causing him trauma, but also because he destroyed his Earth and he was bad and basically he'll realize, yes, I need to stay good because I don't want to turn out like this guy. And basically, this version of Lex is trying to stop Superman on this Earth where he has landed from becoming what he became on that other Earth. So, I mean, he thinks he's the hero, and maybe he is a hero after all, however, this version of Superman isn't bad, as of right now. Okay, so let's move on to the next thing. So we have Jordan and Superman in the Fortress of Solitude. This is definitely a new set, it's different from Supergirl. I was wondering if they were going to include the Fortress at any point, because we've seen it so extensively on Supergirl, and I believe Superman's even been in it in Supergirl before, so it looks different, and it's just another retcon, basically, that Superman Lois is doing. So, I'm not that annoyed, because it did look cool, and I really did like this set of the Fortress of Solitude, and I thought they did a good job at introducing Jor-El, actually, into this, and basically telling him, well, telling Jordan about his history, and also implanting some ideas in his head about, you know, him maybe not being good enough to become Superboy or like a version of Superman. And so yeah, also Jor-El was introduced in this episode, obviously the hologram. Basically Clark tells his son, this is your grandfather and he taught me everything I know in terms of my history, where I came from, because I was just a baby. Obviously Kara could have told him, however, he landed there before Kara got to Earth. So, on the other side, obviously, we've been talking a lot about Superman so far and his story in this episode with Lex because I feel like that was the most interesting part. However, Lois had a great part of the episode where she started this conflict with Morgan Edge. And so, she's working on this Morgan Edge article and basically, Lana and Kyle come in, they see it. Kyle is obviously a bit agitated because he thinks Morgan Edge is like a really good guy. And so this sets off her sort of story arc with her own villain, Lois's villain, who is Morgan Edge. And so you have her researching into Morgan Edge's atrocities and writing up this article. However, it must be noted that Morgan Edge basically owns her because he owns the Daily Planet and he can edit whatever he wants. And he does do that later in the episode, but we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so Clark and Jordan return from the Fortress of Solitude. You have Clark being proud of himself, thinking he's a good father. Basically, Jordan looks very happy, and he's excited. Obviously, whilst this is happening, you've got the other side happening with Jonathan, who is feeling very left out, and school isn't very good for him because, you know, he is being impacted by the people around him. Also, at the same time, you've got General Lane, who updates Clark on Captain Luthor. We talked about that, but Lois confronts this lady that she saw earlier in, like, a diner or cafe. And it turns out she is the writer, editor, and basically she owns the Smallville Gazette. So, that is where Lois is going to be working throughout this whole season as a journalist, because she did, at the end of the episode, quit from Morgan Edge's Daily Planet considering that he is basically censoring anything she wants to write and she wants to expose him and she's gonna do that but with the Smallville Gazette so later in the episode she goes 
to the Smallville Gazette and she basically is like, yes, this is the altered version of the article and here is the real version. I want you to publish it and let me join your team. So that's going to be a big part of Lois's arc, at least for the first part of the season, probably going into the back half as well. Back in the Fortress of Solitude, so they return and jor talks about Krypton's war, basically talking about the history, how it all kind of built up and accelerated towards the planet's destruction and how everything went down. So basically giving a history recap to us, but mainly giving it to Jordan who doesn't know anything about his history. And so Clark reveals to Jordan that he was named after his grandfather Jor-El. And Jor-El even says to Jordan that he may be the one to further the Kryptonian heritage. And now this could lead to super family stuff we've been expecting sometime soon. Maybe Jonathan is going to get powers at some point. Possibly even Lois or maybe Lana because in the comics they are at some points superwoman. So... There is a definite possibility for like a super family and for now it's going to be Superman and Superboy which actually is referenced in this episode by Jonathan and so I thought that was a nice little nod to what is potentially going to be happening with Superboy. So obviously right now that's Jordan but he is basically told later in the episode that yes you are Kryptonian and you are part Kryptonian however your human side is dwindling your powers and you're never going to be nearly as powerful as your dad's. And this is a kind of big step back for Jordan in terms of his journey to becoming Superboy because he's very insecure now. And so like I mentioned, there was a few great battles throughout this episode with Superman and Lex. And you have this great battle where they're flying through the sky, they're battling out, and then Lex reveals kind of what's happening and what happened with his version of Superman, which leads on to the bomb being on the ship, and then Superman has to get it away from the city where it's heading towards, and he lifts it up into space. Just like last episode, he basically crash lands back on Earth. He is falling from the atmosphere, and he actually crashes this episode. So there were many great scenes, and I think the CGI on this show is very, very solid as of right now, and the fights are very good, and the shot really nicely as well. Okay, so Clark and Lois, after this, they talk about Captain Lex. They're wondering about who he is, because he doesn't know that he's Lex right now. However, we as the audience and the spectator, we know that he's Lex. However, he knows that he's from another Earth. So he's gonna be finding out bit by bit kind of who he is and what is his motivations for all of this and he gets some big hints in this episode and there was this great line in this one scene that we're talking about right now with Clark and Lois and Lois says you do your Superman stuff and I'll do my Lois Lane stuff and I think that kind of is what is happening right now on Superman and Lois because they're setting up these big stories with Superman's main villain being this version of Lex from another earth and all of his trauma from the Ultraman version of Superman from his Earth. And then at the same time, you have Lois having her own villain, that being Morgan Edge. She is fighting with her reporting skills. And so you have these two big bads. And I really like that quote that you do your Superman stuff and I'll do my Lois Lane stuff. Okay, so then we get to this kind of big confrontation with the family because Jonathan feels left out. And then you have Jordan basically freaking out as well because this is just after he finds out that he's never going to be like his father. That is told by Jor-El in the Fortress of Solitude. And so it's something about, you know, his solar radiation cells. They can't soak them up at the rate that Superman's does because he's not fully Kryptonian. He is part human, so he doesn't have the same abilities. And as they're fighting, Lois basically tells them, what's what, stop fighting, get to your room and basically sort this out. So the next day they go to the Cushing's barbecue and you got Jordan who is sticking out for Jonathan. I thought that was a really nice element to the episode because by the end of the episode they do come together and I think it's nice that they're not just completely opposing forces because as of right now for most of these two episodes they have been facing off against each other. So it's good to see that they are finally teaming up and maybe at one point they're going to have like a proper superhero team up if Jonathan ever develops powers. So after this, and we've already talked about it, you have the scene where Lex confronts General Lane and then it all leads up to that big confrontation. But anyway, because we talked about that, let's move on to the next thing. So Jonathan Jordan had that great moment that I talked about just a minute ago and basically he's going to help him become Superboy. He's going to help him through all of this and train him and, you know, be there with him. And I think he needs the support because basically... Clark is a bit disillusioned because he trusts everything that Jor-El said and so they're ready to defy expectations and I believe what they're leading towards is him becoming fully a Superboy. So I'm talking about Jordan here but with the help of Jonathan 
and so maybe it's like a little tag team thing going on and I think he's going to definitely get his powers fully in control sometime soon and you know he's going to need the help of Jonathan for this and so it was a great moment and very touching that they finally are working together and so Clark gives Jordan a beeper towards the end of this episode and obviously that is a big thing because now he can go to school and he can call if he ever gets into any situation and Superman will be there instantly because that is his beacon after all. And so last few things we have Lois confronting Morgan Edge as she takes a trip back to Metropolis and she's in the Daily Planet building and then her editor there was like oh I'm sorry Lois like I didn't know that he was gonna edit everything out and then she storms into Morgan Edge's meeting and then she's like, yeah, you just edited out my whole article. And she leaves him with a note and she basically resigns from a job and a note says, I quit. That's all. I thought that was a great moment because she says it's the best writing I've done since I've been working for you. That was a solid burn right there, Lois. Okay, so later in the episode, obviously towards the end, you have that chilling ending with Ultraman. So I'm saying it's Ultraman because he literally says don't call him Superman because I think he used to be Superman on his earth but he is named something else because of what he becomes. He is not super anymore. He is terrible and so I think this may be like a crime syndicate earth that he comes from. So what do you guys think about my theories? What do you think about this whole breakdown and this video? If you did enjoy it please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Let me know what you think about this episode as well. Also, please be sure to subscribe if you're new and turn on notifications so you don't miss any Superman Lois videos. I'm sure we're going to make like a bunch more videos. I kind of want to touch again on my Ultraman theory in an upcoming video in more depth. So be on the lookout for that. And after this video, we're going to have a Flash Season 7 Episode 2 trailer breakdown that is going to be released in a few hours from now when this goes up. So make sure you have notifications turned on. Also, you can check out my Flash review for the premiere of Season 7 that aired just before Superman Lois. I uploaded that last night. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.